well hello um, good afternoon students since you have not joined the meeting so i've decided that i would record some of the study material and share it with you but i'd like to point out that uh, from uh, tomorrow be careful and take it seriously uh, join your class at the time at the time mentioned in the timetable otherwise it will be difficult to complete the course you know and uh, as i have said if due to some reason network problem or other reason if i am not able to uh, you know uh, meet you at the class time then i'll send you material in the recorded form so i have uh, introduced the lesson to you lesson 4 rat trap and uh, i hope you would have also gone through um that sixth poem in your course on jennifer's tigers i have sent you material please send a few you know voice notes uh, mentioning whether you have gone through it or not okay so um we start the lesson directly without any introduction because uh, i've already given you the introduction now here we go once upon a time there was a man who went around selling small rat traps of wire so there was a rat trap seller you know um he made them himself at odd moments from uh, the material he got by begging in the stores or at the big farms so you know um he used to sell the small rat traps which he made himself and look at the use of uh, the himself so ref reflexive pronoun i'll give you just one example you see if we say um uh, he himself made them uh then himself is used to emphasize but the author says he made them himself this means it was he and nobody else uh who made it okay but even so the business was not especially profitable so he had to resort to both begging and petty thieveries to keep body and soul together so you know his business was not uh, very profitable so in order to survive in order to make both ends meet to keep body and soul together he had to indulge in small thieveries also even so his clothes were um in rags uh, his cheeks were sunken and hunger gleamed in his eyes so even after uh, you know a try i mean um, indulging in petty thieveries even then he didn't get enough to eat you know he was wearing rags his clothes were torn cheeks were sunken that is falling in words dhase hue the cheeks uske this shows that he was a lean so lean and thin <coughs> and hunger gleamed in his eyes that means hunger appeared in his eyes he always seemed to be hungry so look no one can imagine how sad and monotonous life can appear to such a vagabond who plods along the road left to his own meditations meditations um you know when you meditate you think quietly thinking quietly without speaking and uh, deep thought indulge in deep thought to plod is to walk uh, with a lot of effort laboriously and uh, we would also encounter a few more words which refer to walking now notice one more thing that uh, uh, for the rat trap seller the word vagabond is used a vagabond is a wanderer one who keeps uh, 
uh, roaming the streets, you know, one who doesn't have any fixed uh, habitation or home. So, um, you know, this usage, vagabond, it reflects an attitude. Earlier, he is referred to a man who sold rat traps, but now he is referred to as a vagabond, which suggests that he was a wanderer. Okay, so life was really sad and boring for such a man who obviously had no company, who kept um, plodding the streets all the time. But one day, this man had fallen into a line of thought which really seemed to him entertaining. So one day, you know, what happened? He started thinking, um, uh, you know, he fell in a line of thought. That means um, he started thinking about a particular thing, you know, and it appeared to him entertaining. Let's see. You see, in fact, he got this idea from his rat traps. And um, what the idea was, he had naturally been thinking of his rat traps when suddenly he was struck by the idea that uh, the whole world um, about him, the whole world with its lands and seas, its cities and villages was nothing but a big rat trap. It had never existed for any other purpose than to set baits for people. It offered them riches and joys, shelter and food, meat and clothing, sorry, heat and clothing, exactly as uh, the rat trap offered cheese and pork. And as soon as anyone let himself be tempted to touch the bait, it closed in on him and then everything came to an end. You see, the idea was that the whole world around him, the world is full of uh, attractive things, luxuries, you know, some of them are mentioned here, seas, cities, villages, um, um, you know, uh, but then this whole world is like a rat trap. So the rat trap becomes a metaphor. And, um, you know, it offered people riches, that is, money, joys, shelter, food, heat, clothing, all luxurious things, you know. So they are like baits, um, the baits that you set in a rat trap in order to catch the rat. So they are like baits. Uh, and a person is often tempted um, to achieve um, or to somehow manage to get all these things. And while doing so, you know, he crosses the moral limits, commits uh, even crimes, sins, and then he has to suffer. So this was a kind of an idea which struck the peddler and he got this idea from his rat traps. And look, I forgot to mention one point, that is the story begins with the phrase, once upon a time. So this is very much the style of a fairy tale. Like, um, you know, you may have read the stories of Vikram and Vital. Um, you know, they say that usually such stories begin with such phrases as once upon a time there was a king and all that. So it's a very much, it's a very much um, fairy tale beginning. And um, now uh, the rat trap seller is the central figure in the uh, story. So let's, uh, let's now read on. The world had, of course, never been very kind to him. So it gave him unwanted joy to think ill of it in this way. So because the world had not been kind to him, so that is why whenever he thought that the world was a rat trap, he was delighted. He, it gave him unwanted joy, joy that he was not accustomed of. It became a cherished pastime of his during many dreary plottings um, to think of people he knew 
who had let themselves be caught in the dangerous snare and of others who were still circling around the bait. So during his ploddings, while he was um, dreary, dull ploddings, that is, um, when, whenever he was walking the streets, he was thinking about those people. They, there, are, there were two sets of people. One who were already caught in the trap of the world, that is, they were busy uh, committing the immoral things in order to get the worldly comfort. And then there were other people who were still circling around the bait. That means they were trying to achieve things um, following the immoral ways. So he used to think about it. Now, one dark evening, as he was trudging along the road, he caught sight of a little gray cottage by uh, the roadside. So he was looking for a shelter for the night, as we know that he doesn't have any home. So incidentally, he caught sight of a cottage and he knocked on the door to ask shelter for the night. Nor was he refused. That means he was not refused. Instead of sour faces, which ordinarily met him, the owner, who was an old man without wife or child, was happy to get uh, someone to talk to in his loneliness. So he was not denied usually he met unpleasant faces places people that they, they who were not very kind to him so uh, this time he uh, met a, an old man who was lonely because he didn't have wife or children so he welcomed him you know and immediately he put the porridge pot on the fire and gave him supper so porridge is a preparation of uh, uh, you know, it's, a, it's the soft food of oatmeal. So he gave him food. Then he carved off such a big slice from his tobacco roll that it was enough uh, both for uh, the stranger's pipe and his own. So he even gave them, um, gave uh, the peddler um, the cigar, you know, to smoke. Uh, finally, he got out an old pack of cards and played Jolis with his guest until bedtime. So Jolis, either you say Jolis or you say Molis, um, you know, the two consonant sounds here cannot be pronounced together. It's M-J-O-L-I-S. So it's a card game, you know, usually played in um, Sweden. Now. The old man was just as generous with his confidences as with his porridge and tobacco. So, um, uh, you know, the old man even tells him his secret. Look, the guest was informed at once that in his days of prosperity, um, his host had been a crofter at Ramstow Ironworks and had worked on the land. So a crofter is a small farmer who either owns um, a small piece of land or rents it. So he was a farmer uh, when he was young. Now that he was no longer able to do labor, it was his cow which supported him. Yes, that bozzy was extraordinary. Bozzy here means domineering or the name given to um, the cow. So cow, I mean, he, uh, it was the cow that supported him. She could give milk for the creamery every day. A creamery, as I mentioned earlier, is um, the place where uh, cream and milk are made into butter and cheese. So she could give milk uh, for the entire creamery every day. And last month, he had received all of 30 krona in payment. So last month he had earned as many as 30 krona. So krona is a unit of money in Sweden. Now, the stranger must have seemed incredulous for um, the old man 
um, got up and went to uh, the window, uh, took down a leather pouch which hung on a nail in the very window frame and picked out three wrinkled 10 kroner bills. These he held up before the eyes of his guest, nodding knowingly and then stuffed them back into the pouch. So here one word incredulous, incredulous, unbelieving. That is uh, the peddler didn't seem to believe him. So what he did that he went, um, I mean, got up and took up, took down the leather pouch from the window nail and showed him the money and then put it back in the in its place now uh, notice one thing here that this time the same person who was earlier referred to as the man who sold rat traps then he was referred to as a vagabond because there it showed that he was a wanderer now he is referred to uh, as a stranger that's because to the crofter at least he was a stranger so you see uh, how different words can be used, um, even synonyms, uh, to reflect an attitude. Okay, now we come to think as you read. Question number one. From where did the peddler get the idea of the world being a rat trap? Obviously, as I told you, um, he got this idea from his rat traps. Why was he amused by this idea? He was amused or entertained by this idea because the world had not been kind to him. So uh, the world had not been very kind to him. So it gave him joy to think ill of the world in this way. Now, did the peddler expect the kind of hospitality that he received from the crofter? No, he didn't because uh, Usually he was met by unpleasant faces. People never welcomed him. So, um, you know, that is why um, he did not expect. Why was uh, the crofter so talkative and friendly with the peddler? That's because he was a lonely man. He needed company, so, uh, you know, to pass time and... Uh, he had a companion, so he was uh, very hospitable and kind to the peddler. Why did he show the 30 kroner to the peddler? That's because the peddler didn't seem to believe the crofter that uh, he could earn this much. So uh, that's why, as a proof, he showed him the, um, the money. Now, did the peddler respect the confidence reposed in him by the crofter? The answer to this question is in the next section. Um, okay, let's read on. The next day, both men got up in good season, that is refreshed, fit and fine. The crofter was in a hurry to milk his cow and the other man probably thought that he should not stay in bed when the head of the house had gotten up. Uh, they left the cottage at the same time. Uh, the crofter locked the door and put the key in his pocket. The man with the rat traps said goodbye and thank you. And thereupon each went his own way. But half an hour later, the rat trap seller um, stood again before the door. Uh, he did not try to get in, however. Uh, he only went up to the window, smashed a pane, stuck in his hand, and got hold of the pouch with the 30 kroner. He took the money and thrust it into his own pocket. Then he hung the leather pouch very carefully back in its place and went away well um, stuck in to stick in is to push so he pushed his hand got out the leather uh, pouch took the money 
and then, you know, hung it back in its place very carefully. He didn't try to enter the house. He simply stole the money and went away. So this shows that um, he did not, uh, you know, respect the, uh, 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 you know, confidence showed in him by the crofter because he stole his money. Although, as I've told you in uh, the previous voice note in the summary, he was, uh, you know, um, later he returns the money. Okay. As he walked along, um, uh, the money, as he walked along with money in his pocket, he felt quite pleased with his smartness. So he was very happy how smartly he had stolen the money. He realized, of course, that at first uh, he dared not he dared not continue on the public highway. So he thought that it would be dangerous to uh, remain on the highway because he might be caught, uh, but must turn off the road into the woods. So he decided that he should enter the forest. You know. Uh, during the first hours, this caused him no difficulty. So in the beginning, there was no difficulty. Later in the day, uh, it became worse, for it was a big and confusing forest. So it, it became very difficult for him. It was a big forest and very confusing one, which he had gotten into, yes, of course. Um, well, he tried to be sure to walk in a definite direction. In fact, he lost his direction. He didn't know uh, which way to go in order to get out of the forest. So it, so he tried to, uh, you know, tried to walk in a definite direction. But the path twisted back and forth so strangely, twisted, bent back and forth. I, I mean, the the path was not straight. He walked and walked without coming to the end of the wood. Look, he was not able to get out of the wood. And finally, uh, he realized that he had only been walking around in the same place, the same part of the forest. All at once, he recalled his thoughts about the world and the rat traps. Now his own turn had come. He had let himself be fooled by a bait and now he had been caught so now he st uh, started thinking about the same thing that is the world being a rat trap and he began believing that it was his turn now he in fact stole the money he allowed himself to be cheated fooled here means cheated by a bait so he stole the money and as a result you know he was lost in the forest the whole forest with its trunks and branches, its thickets and fallen logs closed in upon him like an impenetrable prison, prison from which he could never escape. So you see, the whole forest became a kind of a prison for him and it seemed as if it were impossible for him to get out of the forest. Uh, we'll cover some more here. Uh, we continue just a minute. Uh, yes, it was late in December. Darkness was already descending over the forest. This increased the danger and increased also his gloom and despair. So it was winter time, so the in winter's days are short. So uh, the darkness was already descending. The sun was about to set, and ob obviously it made things dangerous for him. And you know, uh, he became really sad and hopeless. Finally, he saw no way out, and he sank down on the ground, tired to death, thinking that his last moment had come. So, you know, because he was so tired, he sank down, he thought that there was no way out, you know, it was impossible to get out of the forest. And so he lay on the ground itself, thinking that his last minute, that his death was about to come. 
but just as he laid his head on the ground he heard a sound a hard regular thumping so as he laid his head on the ground he could hear a sound it was hard regular thumping there was no doubt as to what that sound was he raised himself those are the hammer strokes from an iron mill uh, he thought so during those days in the forest there was an iron mill so perhaps you know the smiths they were hammering the iron to flatten it there must be people nearby he summoned all his strength got up and staggered in the direction of the sound so you know to summon is to call together he with all his um, you know courage he somehow managed to get up and um, moved in the direction of the sound to stagger is to walk in a shaky manner larkhlate which and the ramps jo iron works which are now closed down were not so long ago a large plant with smelter rolling mill and forge so you see iron works that have now been closed um, but um, earlier they used to exist and um, um, there was a large plant plant here means uh, uh, kind of a you know system or uh, um a system for carrying out mechanical work you know or a place for carrying out, carrying out mechanical work and it had smelter to smelt is to melt iron now smelter can mean both a place where melting is done or a person who melts it had a, a, a there was a rolling mill that's a mill which produces flat sheets of metal and forge forge has two meaning it's a smithy's workshop jahan pe smithy kaam karta hai blacksmith uska workshop hota hai aur forge furnace ko bhi kehte hain bhatti jise bolte hain in the summer time long lines of heavily loaded barges and scows slid down the canal uh, uh, slid down the canal uh, which um, sorry uh, which led to an a large Uh, inland lake and in the winter time the roads near the mill were black from all the coal dust which sifted down from the big charcoal grates so what happened um, during uh, the summer you know uh, the iron was supplied the refined iron and the refined iron and its sheets were pro- supplied um, to the outer world that is it was taken uh, to be sold so heavily loaded barges and scows are small boats you know so they went through a canal to an inland lake you know and in the winter time they did their work they prepared uh, the flat sheets of and now that's why the author says that the roads were um, um roads near the mill were black from the coal dust because uh, because of the coal dust the roads even uh, became black and this coal dust sift, sifted that is separated from the charcoal crates crates packing cases the packing cases uh, in which the charcoal was kept um um now next paragraph during one of the long dark evenings uh just before christmas the master smith and his helper sat in the dark forge near the furnace waiting for the pig iron which had been put in the fire um uh, to be ready to put on the anvil pig iron means unrefined iron and the uh, anvil is a smithy's block on which a smith hammers ek laga block hota hai jis pe lohe ko rakh ke usko hammer karke flat kiya jata hai 
so the master blacksmith that is the chief of the workers there he and his companion and his helper they were sitting there near the fire they were waiting for the pig iron to be brought uh, to the anvil so that it could be flattened uh, every now and then one of them got up to stir the glowing mass with a long iron bar returning in a few moments dripping with perspiration so it was so hot you know the furnace was so hot that uh, you know though as the uh, custom as was the custom he wore nothing but a long shirt and a pair of wooden shoes so despite that he was uh, sweating all the time uh, there were many sounds to be heard uh, in the forge so the forge was a noisy place for example the big bellows groaned bellows means the pipes through which you drive air into the fire phookte hain jis pipe se taaki aag achhi tarah se jal jaye groan otherwise means to moan but here means here it refers to the sound of the um uh, the the bellows you know and the burning coal uh cracked so the burning coal also cracked and made a sound the fire boy shoveled uh charcoal into the maw of the furnace with a great deal of clatter so shovel is a spade and maw is the central part of the furnace clatter is a kind of a rattling noise so you know the fire boy threw the coal into the fo- uh, furnace with a lot of noise outside roared the waterfall and a sharp north wind whipped the rain against the brick tile roof so outside there were other noises like the noise of the waterfall and during uh, when it was raining the wind was blowing and um, as a result uh, you know it whipped the rain that is lashed the rain on uh, the roof and the walls and so it was noisy it was probably on account of all this noise that the blacksmith did not notice that a man had opened the gate and entered the forge so because of the noise he uh, uh, you know the blacksmith did not notice uh, that just a minute please i have dropped my mic um you see um the because of the noises the blacksmith could not notice that somebody had entered the forge in fact the peddler had entered the forge you see until he stood close up to the furnace so he came very close to the furnace surely it was nothing unusual for poor vagabonds without any better shelter for the night to be attracted to the forge by the glow of light which escaped through the sooty panes uh and um, to come in to warm themselves in front of the fire so first of all you see it was not unusual people you, people were usually attracted by the light that escaped through the window and they entered the forge in order to warm themselves now sooty panes soot is a substance uh, that rises in the smoke of wood when it is burnt kalik ji se kehte hain the blacksmith glanced only casually um and indifferently at the intruder so the blacksmith first of all let's learn the word intruder he had intruded he and he had entered without permission but for the peddler this time the word intruder is used because he had entered without permission so look vagabond um you know um peddler and now intruder and earlier the word stranger has also been used for the peddler so uh, indifferently you know casually rather not seriously and indifferently he looked that is blacksmith uh, looked at the intruder not 
um, very seriously, he didn't take him seriously and didn't give him any respect at all. Uh, he looked the way the people of his type usually did, with a long beard, dirty, ragged, and a bunch of uh, rat traps dangling on his chest. So the peddler, you know, was a poor man. Uh, he had a long beard, his clothes were dirty, dirty and, um, you know, were in rags, tattered, torn. And there was a bunch of um, rat traps that was hanging from his chest. So because of this appearance, you know, he was uh, not treated uh, respectfully by the blacksmith. Uh, the tramp did not um, uh, say anything either. He had not come there to talk about, sorry, to talk, but only to uh, warm himself and sleep. So now the word tramp is used for the stranger. You see, um, um, the tram, the wanderer did not say anything because his purpose was not to talk but to warm himself and sleep. So, um, you know, I think uh, we should close this voice note here and um, I'll request you to please attend your class and go through it today itself and uh, so that we can proceed uh, you know accordingly okay so um then see you tomorrow please join uh, please join uh, the meeting the class according to your timetable uh, every day you know so i kind of um, post this material to you right now okay Thanks a lot.